Good morning, everyone. Welcome into North Dakota Today. She Can STEM is a book featuring some pretty incredible women. Liz Lee Heineke joins us this morning with more on the colorful hands-on book exploring science, technology, engineering, and math. Good morning, Liz. Good morning, Ashlyn. How are you? Doing so wonderful. I'm so glad you could join us. I'm thrilled to be here and talk about like some amazing women in science. So thanks for having me on. I love that. Okay, so first of all, do you want to give us some background on Sheik and STEM and how it really covers history even to now? Yeah, so Sheik and STEM um, is a great. It's a it's a collection of the biographies of 50 women scientists, and they're all important in their field. But it's really fun to watch through history how science has changed and how the people who do science has changed. So I write about each scientist and then I have a little project um, included at the end. So kids or whoever's reading can try a little project related to the work of each scientist who I write about. Okay, I love that. And you're also known as the kitchen pantry scientist. Can you give our viewers some background on yourself? Yeah, I um, have a master's degree in microbiology, but um, when I stayed home with my three kids, I started doing science at home, doing science with them. And it turned into a whole career of science writing and demonstrating um, science for kids on television. So I'm really lucky I have a pretty cool job. I would say pretty cool is the most simple way to describe everything that you are offering in this book. Not only is it educational, but it's hands on. You really reached the trifecta. Do you want to tell us about some of the activities I think we get to see today? Yes, yeah, so one of the scientists I talk about is named Agnes Pockels, and she was born in 1862 in what is now Germany. At the time, women weren't allowed to be accepted into universities. Her brother went off to school, but she stayed home to take care of her parents, and she started doing science in her own kitchen sink. She noticed that when she had a detergent to the oils in her sink, it would break the surface tension, and she actually ended up inventing uh, a tool called a slide trough, which scientists still use today. But kids can explore this concept of surface tension by putting some milk in a dish. Um, and milk is like water. The surface of it, the water molecules all stick together. And it makes almost like the surface of a balloon is one way to imagine it, or the surface of a bubble. So they can drip food coloring into the milk. And then they can break the surface tension using dish soap. And it's pretty cool because dish soap acts almost like a chemical knife. So I had just have some dish soap and water mixed here together, and I think you'll be able to see this. When you touch the dish soap to the milk, can you see that? Oh my gosh, yep, there it goes. It breaks the surface tension, and the milk, uh, the food coloring can come up and swirl around. It makes these beautiful patterns. If you watch it, it'll keep making new patterns. You know, kids can take pictures of it, put it on their Instagram, whatever, but um, it's a really fun way to explore surface tension. Okay, that's incredible and a nice little easy at-home way to really get the kiddos involved. What else do you have set up? Okay, so another scientist who I talk about is Mary Golder Ross, and she um, is a super cool scientist. She was born in about 1870, and she is the great-granddaughter of the man who was the chief of the Cherokee tribe during the Trail of Tears. And she grew up, it's really cool, the Cherokee tradition, they educated both boys and girls, so she was allowed to be educated. She um, actually became an aerospace engineer. During World War II, she worked on studying how air moved across the wing of fighter jets to try to make better airplanes for, um, for our country. And later she went to work in a think tank um, for the US called the Skunk Works. After that, she went to work for NASA and she helped them write the planetary travel or planetary flight handbook, which is so cool. So to explore this, kids can just go online, look up a bunch of different ways to fold air paper airplanes. Um, there are some really simple ones, some trickier ones, and they can change the design of their paper airplanes to see how it affects flight. <laughs> so that's one cool project kids can do to learn about the scientist. Okay, that was actually an incredible flight path right toward the camera lens. I love that. I planned that. <laughs> <laughs> and to round it out, I think we have one more, right? One more. So Inez Mexia is a really cool woman. Her dad was a Mexican diplomat, but she was not allowed to be educated. She always loved like plants and animals though. And this is so cool. When she was 50 years old, she moved, moved to San Francisco, took some classes at Berkeley, started going into the mountains, going into, um, going around the hills, you know, putting on pants, riding a horse, going through the hills of California and South America and Mexico collecting plants. She collected over 150,000 species, many of which are still in museums today, uh, identified 500 new species and 
So it was just a really important person who got her start later in life, but always loved science. And kids can explore her work by making their own plant press. You just need some cardboard, piece of heavy paper, and then some newspaper. Kids, I just have some sage here because it's not really plant time of year. <laughs> the kids can go outside, collect plants. They can press them just between layers of newspaper, heavy paper, cardboard. You can do layer after layer, press them under some heavy books or cans, and then they can try to go online and identify them. There are lots of cool plant identification apps. So it's a cool way for kids to like get their hands into the some, some of the science that um, Inez Mexia um, did when she was doing science. And there are you know, 47 other cool scientists in this book from past to present. It's just a fun way to learn history, but also like get involved in science and go outside and get involved in the world around you. I think that's incredibly fun. It's hands-on, it's educational, and it's entertaining. What more could you want? How do we get our hands on your book? You can um, buy my book anywhere books are sold. So your favorite brick and mortar bookstore, you can go online and buy it. Um, yes, everywhere books are sold. Um, go get this book. You know, <laughs> it's, it's really targeted for kids seven to 14. But I've talked to a lot of teenagers and adults who also have really enjoyed reading the biographies of these amazing women. I commend you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Liz Heineke. Thanks for having me on. Of course.